Hey, welcome to Today from Bowie. I'm Elijah O.T. and here are my two special guest stars, Alex J. and Michelangelo. The topic is hip hop, a billion dollar industry. We was just visited by Gucci Man, Shy Glizzy, and Q the Fool. Here's some tea. All my ladies, make some noise for the war. And I'll be in swirl, swirl a key with my swirl a cheek. Yellow diamonds on my neck and wrist. That's this yellow beat. It's tight, black, glow, black, tight, but I don't play no pray. Wake up and take a piece of heat on sharpening his eyes. Main focus every day is making it out here alive. Who's up, my son? Who's up, my son? Who's up, my I'm here with Alex J. Uh, tell us some of the projects you're getting into. Well, right now I'm just working on my single. It's called Summer Love. Um, right now we're still um, getting a mix and master aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, it's basically done and then we're going to shoot the, the music video for it. So, yeah, it's definitely a dope song. Um, even though it's not summer right now, it's going to make you feel like it's still <laughs> summer. So, it's still summer. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard you work with a couple of other artists, could you name some of them? Um, well, not as far as mainstream, mm -hmm. but um, I did work with like a few of y'all probably don't really know them, but I mean they they pretty dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one being like Dolly Taylor. Um, I'm working with one named Ana. She's mm -hmm. actually in the song uh, "Summer Love," so yeah, you'll hear her real soon too as well. Definitely have to check out Summer Love. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm here with my other guest star, Michelangelo. He mm -hmm. owns his own record label. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you give us some insight about that? No problem. Um, my name is Michelangelo Hayes. I'm actually a graduate of Morehouse College, and I go here to Bowie State as well. But um, in Atlanta, I found a record label called Mike Check Entertainment LLC. You can follow us on like at Mike Check Entertainment on Instagram. But we're uh, we're creativity first. So in terms of artists. Uh, what we do, we help uh, put them in an incubation program. We want to make sure that we're using our company model, living longevity to the destiny. We want all of our artists to be able to have a long-lasting legacy in the game. We hook them up with publishing deals, help them get their masters, copyright, while still making profit for ourselves because we believe everybody should be eating in hip-hop. Also had a, a non-profit called the AC Hip Hop Revolution. Uh, that start, that's what started my check. And I currently am the mainstream music director for the demo tape here in Maryland that we just had a, a deal that we locked down the other day with Warner Brothers to kind of partner with them to bring artists more into the forefront. As well as owning your own record label. Mm -hmm. uh, you do some music too as well. Of course, yeah. I've been, uh, it's funny because I started, um, my story with that is something very, very brief. But uh, my parents kind of kept me from like Tupac and all these rappers because they say, you know, they was cussing. They grew up in a very Christian household. Unfortunately, they got divorced. I had a lot of time to myself. Mm -hmm. So then I got into Biggie, who's now my favorite rapper all the time. But then I started to rediscover Bad Boy, N.W.A., everything of that sort. And I just fell in love with that. And then I started rapping. My first rap was Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, wrote like a little <laughs> freestyle. And they uh, lauded me as one of the best rappers in school, in high school. And I've just been rapping for years. Uh, four mixtapes under my belt. Um, just like, uh, and then I got more into management because I want other artists to experience that good life. That seems pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, Alex and Michael, I know y'all both are recording artists. So, mm -hmm. like, what are the things that you know that gave you the passion to pursue music? Mm -hmm. Well, me? for me, um, it was more so like I just music always been in my life. You know, I started off in church, um, mm -hmm. been singing since I was seven, and I also taught myself how to play guitar and piano. So, you know, I always wanted to, you know, write my music and like, to be honest, um, I, I know more of my songs than a lot of other known songs, which is kind of weird, you know, but, you know, that's just how, you know, like I just took, I just always wanted to create, you know, so um, 
when I first got in the studio, like I just, it just took off right there, you know, because I just loved it. You know, just hearing my sound mm -hmm. and something, just writing something, making it come to life. Like mm -hmm. it just always felt good to me as an artist. Like a light bulb. So oh yeah, cool. yeah. Music is music is like that. Yeah. Me, yeah. Uh, yeah, could you give us? Yeah, like I think uh, I think it's safe to say. Like I remember, there's a song called "Last Night DJ Saved My Life." Like I feel like hip hop saved my life in a sense because I was uh, when I was going through like the parents' divorce and everything. I was poor. I was living like a uh, one bedroom apartment. I had to sleep in the laundry room. I had to walk home a mile to get to school. I was just depressed and everything. And I remember I heard one mic by Nas and everything. And this may sound weird and everything, but there's a tear that came out of my eye because the way he articulated and hit that verse, that last verse was beautiful. And then that just made me write my own, put my passion into it. And so then I start writing. I just wanted to give people that same feeling because hip hop really inspires something in us. It's been inspiring for generations. And for me to be able to spread that to other people, when I see people do shows and have that energy, I said just to give back to the world in that sense is usually a God-given talent. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty awesome, I have to admit. Um, yeah, I, I know a lot of people here know that like hip hop is one of the most listened to genres of music today. Mm -hmm. like, what do you think that's uh, attributed to? Is it because of the subgenres that are popping up, like emo rap, mumble rap, mm -hmm. or is it just because of the, the independent artists themselves pushing their own content out? Um, it's, it gotta be, you know, the, the second thing that you just said. I mean, like, basically, yeah, hip hop is, you know, is real huge. I mean, well, to me. Um, it's not as huge as it used to be though, because now it like this music industry it changed like a lot, you know, and you know, especially, you know, with people being independent, it's it's just real it's real hard. So, um I mean that's just my input on it, you know. Um a lot of people might not agree with me, but you know, like it it just changed a lot now. And, you know, I just feel as though what what's lacking in this hip hop industry is um the difference people is, is is scared to 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 be different. You know they're scared to to be out and you know they're they're sounding the same and it's not it's just not how it used to be now. You know, so that's just my input on it. You got any thoughts, my guy? I appreciate your uh, appreciate your thoughts and everything. I don't want to be like the the big good cop bad cop and everything, but I love hip hop because why you think it's been so popular? You gotta look at in terms of with jazz blues, a lot of this rock and roll and everything, who was they created by? Like black people, right? And the same thing, that's how we created hip hop. We did create it with like, you know, Hispanic and Latino community and poor whites and everything, but we're just following cyclical, same cyclical cycle. We create one of the biggest genres, but now it's the biggest genres in the world. And it builds off like all the black music that we've been building up ever since we had, you know, call and response in the slave deals. Like we push the culture as a people. So in terms of blues, in terms of jazz and everything, that was us in hip hop. That's something with us as well and everything. So you say, you know, uh, how can it be such a big thing? But uh, it's incredible now because hip hop, it, contrary to the hype, conjured pop belief and everything, they say, you know, it's not as real anymore. You got the mumble raps, you got like, da -da 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 -da, everything, people doing that. But we have to realize, someone told me once, they were talking about how Big Sean and J. Cole are underrated and everything because they speak about real, but that's not pushed on the radio. And then someone said, how can you call Big Sean and J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar underrated and real when they went uh, platinum, double platinum, triple platinum, everything of that sort? The real are going to survive in hip hop. And that's always what it's been about in terms of authenticity and everything. And just like with yin and yang and everything, you have to have the good and bad within hip hop and everything. Good and bad, that's subjective and everything. But of course, you have the real music, but you don't want to be sometimes in the club and, you know, dumping. You want to hear, like, If I Rule the World by Nas and everything. Sometimes you want to hear Bad and Bougie and turn up with your boys and everything. That's how it goes. Like, it's a yin and yang that needs to be balanced, and I'm glad it's evolving in both fronts, and that's my opinion on it. Listen, I, I, I definitely like what you said, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm going to focus on one part of what no you problem. said. All right. You said there's, there's always a good and bad to mm -hmm. hip-hop, but now it's like, is hip-hop becoming more consumption-based? Just what a bunch of content rather than talent exactly i was talking about that too one of my artists under my record label he got this is i'm gonna give Sarah a very personal story he came to me yesterday and we would do we did like tours and everything in atlanta he said he had a complaint that you know we weren't like putting like doing like super promo he said he was comparing trippy red and lil uzi and then lil yachty and i told him i was like you can't try to be like everybody else and try to be blow up. Like artists is in a sense of blowing up and they want to cash out quick and everything, you know? And I'm not saying all are like that, but you know, you just had Matt Ox and everything, you know? He signed like a deal with Warner Brothers and he had like a million dollar deal. 
and he's like, it's the dude, he's like a 13 year old doing fidget spinners. And I haven't even heard of a song, but he's went viral and everything. Like it is becoming consumption based in that the sense if you can make a good hook, a catchy hit and everything, and you have a hot dance to it, that's all you need to cash out and everything. So it be, has become consumption based, especially since corporatocracy has had a, a sense in hip hop as well. Because we had in 1990s, they put out a law in Congress, which is, you know, now there's six major companies that control over 90% of the distribution and everything of the sort. So they're on each other's e-boys and on that, and they influence what gets put out and everything. So just like how jazz started off, like, you know, in the streets and hip-hop started streets, now it's become, they said, a corporate's like, oh, we can make cash off this? They said, we don't care about no real content, we want to make money. So they signed people who can make hits and everything. So it has switched to that and everything. Mm -hmm. Even with people like Kendrick and Big Sean, of course they're making real music, but it does come down to money every day, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, how I look at it is, you know, um, this industry don't really want to hear about what's real, mm -hmm. you know, that like that's not, you know, they just don't like it. You know, it's more so like they want to hear about money, about sex, about, you know, like it's, it's about just irrelevance. You know, this generation now, mm -hmm. what people got to understand is because of this generation, like we're never going to get that real hip hop mm -hmm. like we heard before, you know. It's just going to be about just irrelevance because that's just what everybody just like to hit, you know. And I just feel as though the only way this music industry is going to change, like it always has, is if somebody come in and change it and be different, mm -hmm. you know. So right now it's, it's just going to be the same for a while until you know somebody like you or me or whoever come in and give people, right. you know, you know, in like encouragement and like an inspiration to, you know, to hear something new. Mm -hmm. That's real, that's real. We gotta support like on artists like you and everything and making music. Uh, we gotta support the Kent, we gotta support anybody in our community that's doing something and everything. It doesn't take much to support, listen to them, share that music, you know? Right. Like people act like, you look, remember on on the, grand, I think it was the, when J Donald Glover got War of the War for in Atlanta, you know? He said, this is so iconic, I think I wrote about this once, but he said, you know, shout out to Migos, you know, not for just being on the show, but for Bad and Bougie. Yeah. That spiked their sales up 300%, 300% and everything. Their album became a number one in the culture. Sometimes it doesn't take much more than a shout out. And like, Alex, we just gotta support our own. How are we gonna complain about stuff ain't real or it ain't getting pushed out if we ain't supporting our own people simply by a listen or a retweet or a share? Mm -hmm. That's all we gotta do. That, mm. As far as you know, as far as you know, music today is like uh, a lot of things are changing as far as, you know, as far as streaming music and mm -hmm. as far as sales for music. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I hope like everybody has uh, found out that uh, YouTube is actually uh, mm -hmm. changing up their, their viewership rules to make uh, every 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 10 views mm -hmm. a stream play that that uh, monetary value mm. so how do you think that is going to affect the rap game as far as like independent artists is that is that going to make it easier for independent artists to get out himself exactly but then it becomes the playing field has become uh so much more level that's ridiculous because you had people like of course you had like you know the pro's the performing rights organizations like ascap bmi and everything of that sort. And you had record labels being the broker, like the middleman. It doesn't have to be like anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of producers, they can produce from their own place and everything. You know, mm -hmm. you have phones, technology has switched the game and everything. But you look at best case study is Chance the Rapper and everything, you know, the yeah. fact of the matter is, like the most, and what people are saying that independent rappers are the new wave and everything, because he's proven he got a Grammy off of a mixtape. Yeah. And that's, I, I think we really underplay it like, he, he talked to Apple, he got the distribution and everything, but he remained independent. He's not just the first rapper, independent rapper, but the first independent artist in history to be on SNL and everything. Okay, and but one more question. Yeah. Independent. Yeah. Chance the Rapper isn't technically independent. He's actually supported by Sony. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the rappers who are actually by themselves, okay. who work on their art by themselves, who have no help. Mm -hmm. I think you... you, you You've been in like yeah. Yeah, a situation like that. Mm -hmm. like, he, of course, you're an artist who worked by himself, who who records with other artists mm -hmm. from from his own talent. Yep. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a label backing him. Yeah. So in terms of that and everything, like it just all depends if like you know if Alex definitely I met uh, Mr. Williams and Eric. She's a good manager as well, you know. So yeah. the fact that if you have a good team 
that's all you really that's, need that's and everything. Job, that's, fa- that's facts. Like, you just get your stuff and you can do it. So, and, like, this, because the music industry, like, what a lot of people don't know is, is they're losing a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Simply because you know, um, you know that nobody isn't buying albums no more. Mm-hmm. People isn't even downloading. They're about mm-hmm. to take downloading off. Streaming is the main thing that's winning. Mm-hmm. You know, and because you know people are being independent, it's it's easy if you really think about it. But it's hard because you got to invest a lot. You know, and a lot of people don't know how to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people don't know how to invest that money, invest that time. You know, just just dedicate their self. You know, mm-hmm. and but um, just speaking for the music industry, it's like it's, it's they're looking for artists because like that is it's 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 easy to get signed. You know, I'ma just put it out there. It's Very real easy. easy to get get signed <laughs> as long as you got you know a lot of followers. You know, because again, the music industry is losing money, so they want to make more money. And the thing is, the reason why a lot of people is being independent, which I suggest a lot of artists to do. Because you know labels, they some of them would take a lot of money from you know they'll put you in these uh, 360 deals, yep. and you know it'll be you know a long time till you get out that contract, you yeah. know, and sometimes it's hard to get out that contract if like what people don't understand too when you get that advance, you're you in debt. Pay it back. You yeah, you got to pay them right back every penny, and there's people even now who's who probably been in. I'm assuming, like, probably, I'm gonna just guess, like, a five-year contract probably still in that contract exactly. because they haven't paid that label yet. Exactly. You know? There was something that happened. Was just to finish up. In there, he's totally right. Like, people think, oh, I'm about to get a deal. I'm about to get that. One of my artists, and we, he's great. Like, I'm not talking, but like, I remember one time we a Motown came to us, and they said, "Yo, we trying to offer you a big like Motown." People produce Michael Jackson and everything, and they said, "You know, we trying to offer him a deal." I said, "Okay, let's talk," because I'm his manager. And he's under us. I'm like, let's talk for a second. And he said, um, he said, uh, he said, they, the guy said, we're gonna have. He just gets to sign on before a bonus. He, he has to pay five thousand. Plus, they gonna like take like stuff out and everything. Mm-hmm. And I told him straight up. I said, no, because that's what you do to artists all the time. You think they getting all these big deals, they gonna exposure, but you give them advance, they have to pay back all this money right. and everything. It's not the move. Mm-hmm. And, and it'd, it'd, it'd be colloquial to say colloquially, it's not the move for artists to be in debt just to have that exposure and everything. It's not worth it. So I definitely agree with Alex. Independent is the wave and what the real money is going to come from. If you want to make money, be a manager, like broker, be a broker and tar- teach, be the person who teach artists how to grow their craft. That's the money. You got to know your business. You got to do your business. You can't just be an artist. You know that you gotta be a, a business person, That's right. entrepreneur. You, know? you have to know the artist. You have to know the music industry in and throughout to be able to navigate mm-hmm. the end of the music industry. Now, I have this saying where in order to be in a relationship, you have to have a relationship. That's with mm-hmm. everything in life. You yeah. know, yeah, right. most definitely. That was that was a pretty good proverb. Um, actually, when you see the the music game today, you see a lot of gimmicks. Everybody. <laughs> uses something to accumulate fame. Mm-hmm. So is it is it, is music more focusing on the fame aspect now or is it All right, so again speaking for this generation mm. it's not even about I would say it's about I'm going to say 1% talent. It's more of <laughs> the visuals, you know, how that person look. Yep. You know and like we're we're so focused on the public, you know, when it's more so about the background. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot again, a lot of people they they don't think of the things that they're supposed to think of. They think of what's being said, but not, you know, what really matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that thank you right now. We'll be back mm-hmm. with more. Right. No problem. Welcome back to the Day from Bowie. I'm here with my guest stars. If you haven't met them already, Alex J and Michelangelo. Um, as far as females mm. and rap in the rap game, mm-hmm. as far as Young Ma, Cardi B, how do you feel like the roles of women in the rap game 
are changing. Exactly. Um, so back in the day and everything, I, even though I'm a man speaking from a man perspective, um, what happened was that, you know, even if a woman rapper is very skilled, like in terms of lyricism, in terms of flow and everything of the sort, what happens is the, with the record label, like how they used to do any type of woman, they try to sexualize in a sense, you know, hypersexualize is what we call it. Mm -hmm. Even little Kim, she could spit and everything of the sort, but they made sure on her covers on everything, she was glammed up and had all these outfits on. Nicki Minaj, you see, follows the same thing. But what's happening, even though Cardi B is on a little bit of that tip, Women are allowed to be more of themselves these days and everything. I think we can see through uh, artists like you know, Jean Grey and Rhapsody, especially Rhapsody. She just put out a project. She had Kendrick Lamar. She had like, you know, Anderson Pack. She had a lot of hard hitters, but she showed, and if you saw the BET cipher with all women from all around you know, the globe, it showed that, you know, we can throw down with the boys. We can be ourselves. We can dress with some tomboy stuff, you know, or we can be sexualized because it doesn't matter because, you know, our representation is on a spectrum and everything. We can be who we are. So it's a lot more free nowadays, what I'll say. And uh, some of these women can throw down as much as the boys. Like, I remember, no offense that my boy T Grizzly is good. I remember Cardi B was on Instagram. I was like, okay, why does everybody keep sharing this tweet? And she was on Instagram live freestyling. Stop, yeah. And I said, bro, this is like the woman version of dreams and nightmares. I was like, she is not snapping like this. And then on No Limit, I went inside the cafeteria the other day and everybody just start pumping and throwing it and everything. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of, but, and we do that, no offense, even though people may say this, and I'm gonna get off on this, we have to give thanks to not just the predecessors, but in terms of modern woman rap, I would say Nicki Minaj and everything of the sort. And that may seem far-fetched because some of the lyricism today is like died down the sense, but back when she came out in 2008, Romans, 2009, when she came Romans out with Itty Bitty, Roman's Revenge, yes. Itty Bitty Piggy and everything, she came back into it mm -hmm. after there was a quote unquote drought and everything. She said, no, I'm hard. I can have lyricism, bars and everything. And then we started to see an influx Azalea Banks, all these people, Young M.A. and everything. Mm -hmm. So we got to give, I would get praise, you know, Miss Nicki Minaj, but then also a tribute to, like, the women today that are killing it. Shout out to Cardi B now. So. Yeah, shout yeah, out to Cardi, Cardi B. B. Shout out to Rachel. <laughs> you know, everybody, they love girls with, you know, big booty or big boobies, <laughs> you know? So it's like, you know, that that's what a lot of people look for then is talent. You know, they, they want to make sure that you look good, you got a nice figure and all that, you know, mm -hmm. but... You know, I would have to, you know, say, like you said, Nicki Minaj, because Nicki Minaj, she, she, she's not just hip hop. Even though she's a rapper, you mm -hmm. know, she went pop. Mm -hmm. And pop is huge as well, you know. Like, to me, it's, it's just number one, to be honest, you know. And, you know, when you have that different uh, crowds, you know, different diversity, like, you're just, you're just, you're just going to get huge. Like, that, that's it. You know, so, but yeah, shout out to Cardi B too. She doing her thing. Yeah. You know, she she came up from being loving hip hop to, you know, just being up there. So, mm -hmm. and it's only going to get bigger for her. So, um, mm -hmm. but we definitely need more, um, more female rappers though, you know. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Cardi B was the first artist, woman artist in over 20 years to have yeah. a number one single, only person with that like is Lauryn Hill. So like, mm -hmm. and then she, like you said, she came up from that situation with Love and Hip Hop. She said, no, I'm gonna focus on my brand. She was coming out with mixtapes. She was coming hard oh, out the pitch yeah, and really. everything. And Cardi now she just got engaged, world. everything Think. of that sort. Like, that's just like, that's how you're supposed to do Everything it. falling into place. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But as far as, would a woman be able to get as successful as Cardi B and Nicki Minaj without that sex appeal? That's a that's a that's a good yeah. question and yeah. everything. Um, Go ahead, yeah. I, it's possible, you know. Again, all we can really do is assume, you mm -hmm. know. But you know, I, I think it, it is it's definitely possible because it, you you can't deny talent. Mm -hmm. You can't just you can't deny it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's just. Um, we just gotta wait for it, I guess, <laughs> mm -hmm. because right now you're, you're not really seeing a female rapper who's really making it if they don't have that sex appeal, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, but like, with everything, sex appeal does, when even like with, with, with guys, with us guys, like you, you gotta attract the ladies, you know? And even like with the, with the women, you gotta, you know, like man. it's all about that attraction because that, is is not just talent, you know. It's more so the visual as well, how you look. Mm -hmm. I gotta concur and build off that point. I remember someone told me the game is the game, you know. 
And uh, with that, with the response to this and everything, your question, the fact of the matter is you have to look visually appealing to people. And that's just how superficial we are as a society. That's how it's going to go through the rest mm -hmm. of it. That's just how we are. It's we not going to change. We as human beings and everything, if someone doesn't look good to us, we ain't going to mess them off rip as opposed to someone that does and everything. Right. That's just human psychology. You're really getting into it. But like... I do believe, because I see Rhapsody, I see a lot of women rap. I saw that BET cypher. I saw a woman that would be really spent. I used to have a, um, a person at Morgan State and everything I was working with. I have a person in Atlanta who's a woman rapper and everything of the sort, but they didn't appeal to that stuff. They were still good. So it's going to be a revolution, and a revolution, just like it's always coming, it is going to come from black women and hip-hop and everything, just like it was a lot of it. So I believe it's going to, but it's going to take time. Yeah. yeah. As far as you, you mentioned Atlanta, yeah. uh, of course, Atlanta is one of the, the hottest, <laughs> hottest spots for hip hop like today, right mm -hmm. now. Like, they support um, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what What are like some of the factors that make Atlanta such like such a hot spot for just hip hop, just for music? Mm -hmm. So what happened was that um, when I was, it's crazy because I went to school in Atlanta um, from like I entered Morehouse in fall of 2012. And I graduated in the 150th class, like this past semester, like spring 2017 and everything. But the fact of the matter is, it was nuts. I think I'll never be that blessed again because I was down there when they invented the name, -A, you know? <laughs> this is when Young Thug and Future was coming up and everything. I was so spoiled because I went to school and more, and Migos came at least two, three times. Ray Sherman, 2 Chains, more on my birthday, 2 Chains dropped, you know, um, dropped his album and everything, Boats 2 and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, right there in Atlanta is the new hub. It was New York, and then it was L.A., but Atlanta right now is that hub for not just music, but hip-hop in their general. It's really incredible. The dances, but what makes it the factors is that Atlanta, like, in terms of, you have people like Gucci Man, like you just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. All the artists support each other in, like, a sub, not just a southern That's sense, what it but is. they mm. support each other. See, in Baltimore, and I've seen everything, and there's other places. You saw what happened with Lord Scooter, uh, you know, God rest his soul and rest everything. Rest in peace. Rest yep. in peace. But the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, you had people who were jealous of him and everything. That happened up in Philly as well. But in Atlanta, even though, you know, we still, like, beef and everything, we like, no, we going to support you. Gucci Man, they had his hashtag set if it wasn't for Gucci when he came out mm -hmm. on everything. Like, in terms of uh, all these people, Gotti, Jeezy, Everybody gave praise. It was like, no, in Atlanta, we support each other. Future brought each other up. Even Andre 3000 and Lupe they said, yeah, yo, Future was at our concerts. We was coming up. We gave a mentor. It's a mentor-like organization, and it's mm -hmm. such a hub for creativity. It's like, like now, that's why when I first came up here, I was like, yo, how can I help you out? Because you mm -hmm. never know what somebody has in Atlanta. And they have a lot of record labels, they have a lot of opportunity. It's a hub because it's like the epitome of what black people stand for, just supporting each other. Support, exactly. supporting a black business and all. Yes. Yeah, it's and, definitely, like, it's, it's, really, it's barely a lot of support in Baltimore. Yeah. You know, like, people do not support it at all. Like, it's, it's just them individually, you know, and it's like, is then there's a lot of fakeness as well. You know, they'll act like they support you until they actually see you skyrocketing up. Yeah. Then it's like, now it, it changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it'd be a whole lot of that. <laughs> a whole lot. But Atlanta, like, is, they're known for, you know, supporting. Like, I be hearing, like, the time that I was in Atlanta, they was playing, you know, a lot of independent artists on the radio. And that's, you don't hear that in, uh, in Baltimore at all. So, what had happened was King Lowe's, for example, you know, one of the most lyrically dexterous like rappers ever and everything. We had the Kendrick Lamar, you know, control verse that came and shook the world mm. out of every rapper in the game at the moment. King Lowe's, he got on Sway in the morning. He says, like, who did the best? All of them, Jada Kiss, everybody, Joey Bat. Mm -hmm. He says, no. He said it was King Lowe's. He had the best one. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, why isn't he on the radio in Baltimore when I come back? I said, that's a crime and everything. And I remember Logic had been like hot for years performing that, you know, he had uh, gotten even a deal with Def Jam and everything of the sort. The first single that was ever on the radio out of all the stuff he spit, even though he was at University of Maryland College Park showing out, uh, he's from uh, Gatesburg, Gatesburg, Gatesburg yeah. Maryland. And, you know, he did. He did like uh, the first one was buried a lot. That was back in 2014. I said, yeah. please mm -hmm. been out for a definite four years, and now he's getting that shine. There's so many Baltimore artists or just like Maryland artists that we need to support. Cool. And, and yeah. we had that same formula what we had with Atlanta and everything. That's how we can grow our hip hop community. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as being like like friendly in the hip hop game, I think is the way Baltimore sees it is it's everybody from themselves. You can't be number one with somebody else being number one. So it's climb 
over someone or be climbed on. Mm-hmm. So that I guess that's that's how uh, the rap game is for right now. But actually going back and looking back in like the older years of hip hop, mm-hmm. how do you think that 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 compares to to hip hop now? Mm-hmm. I would say in terms of like, you had a lot more groups back then and everything. You know, you want to talk about, I could talk about Run DMC. I could talk about Wu-Tang and everything, right? Let's go even, let's talk about the Cold Crush Brothers, you know? Let's talk about the people in the 80s. You ever seen the show The Get Down? You had rap groups. They were singing, dancing, <laughs> everything. You Break know, dancing, everything. Yeah, like all the grandmasters, all the names. They was in rap groups and everything. Rap was yeah. such a community type of thing. If you got the Sugar Hill Gang, you know, the first big hit and everything, it's mm-hmm. a group thing. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm not trying to say everybody should have to clap, you can be solo if you want and everything, but you see if you combine your efforts, you combine your talents, you never know. Because I was watching the get down and they did like sample this good to be here by the Jackson Five. And he was performing, singing, dancing. dancing. I said, this is incredible. So yeah. um I love just to give a shout out my favorite ones like Rock Kim and you know Eric B. Mm-hmm. And then you have like Big Daddy Kane, Curtis Blow, all mm-hmm. those people. We're standing on the shoulders of giants of the greatest genre right. ever to come out in the world in the world history. The biggest is, genre yeah. in today. And in history today. Mm-hmm. And it's our culture and everything. Yeah. So definitely we should go look like, not do everything they did, but mm-hmm. take elements of it, you know, to grow as into a better culture. Yes. Yeah. So. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, like what I noticed back then, it was like, rap, rappers, they just didn't care. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> that's, right. that's because a lot of people didn't really, you know, they didn't judge a lot at that time. It's like they agreed with what they was doing now. Mm-hmm. You know, the difference is, like you'll get bashed if you talk about the truth. Like your mm. your career could be ended just like that, mm. you know. And like it, it's sad, but you know that's just the way that it is now. You know, there's nothing that we could do yeah. about it. Yeah, you you've been on BET mm-hmm. and, uh, Six and X Factor. Um, yeah. How was the experiences performing Man. at those shows? <laughs> Man, is I could say it was definitely an experience because it was my first time. The first time I was actually on TV mm. was on 106 and Park. I was on there twice. Wow. Um, like the crowd, the energy was just amazing. Um, now I'm a let's go to X Factor real quick. <laughs> now that one I could say was the best experience um, because of course I, I just met some great people there as well. Um, and like it, it was probably like 3,000 people on the stage. And you know, the great thing is, you know, I got a stand ovation. Mm. You know, I made Britney Spears cry. Um, wow. The only person I could say who well, I'm not even shocked was, was hating was Simon Cowell. Yeah, yeah. You know? Simon Cowell. Yeah. Simon. But <laughs> you know, the good thing is, you know, L.A. Reid, Demi Levado, and Britney Spears, they loved me, you know. Mm. Um, the bad part about the whole situation was um, a lot of people don't know was that. Uh, the first time, you know, that I was on, um, when I was uh, doing the live auditions, mm-hmm. um, again, like, you know, I did great, you know, I made it to the second round. Mm-hmm. But Simon, you know, he, for some reason, he said that uh, I was, like, too professional because it must must have been because I had, you know, a, um, a business manager with me, which it was my mistake because at the time, you know, by me being 16, I didn't know what to say and what not to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't supposed to say I had a business manager. So because I had that, you know, he booted me off the show. But the wow. good thing about it was, you know, I had Britney Spears, um, L.A. Reid and Demi Lovato fighting for me. At least that's what the producer told me because everybody have a certain producer, mm-hmm. you know, that they um, contact, you know, to, um, you know, while they, uh, you know, been, while they're on the show. So. You know, that was a good part about it. Of course, I was hurt about it, but you know, at the end of the day, like me being there and experiencing everything yeah. and just meeting the people who I was meeting because it was just so much talent. Like, it was just a great feeling. Helps you grow up as yeah, an artist. It helped me grow a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this is an X Factor or BET, but could we have you perform something? Yeah. Of course. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, y'all probably know this one's called uh, Love by Music Soul Child. <laughs> Love, so many things I got to tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know how. Cause it's a possibility that you look at me differently, love. Ever since the first moment I spoke your name, 
And from then on I knew that by you being in my life, things were destined to change cause love so many people use your name in vain Love Those who have faith in you sometimes go astray Love Through all the ups and downs I heard in your life Love, for better or worse, I still will put you first. Love. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely makes me wish I could sing. Definitely wish. But um, yeah, you know, he, that was that was amazing. Thanks, um, man. That was pretty good time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, would you like to preview some bars? Or yeah, something? man. Someone want to beatbox is fine. Or I could do acapella, but you know, just gonna try to go off the dome and everything. Like I like, I love all of hip hop, but in terms of my style, it's a little bit more '90s or '80s. So, you know, here I go. So, I'll um, try to beatbox. I, I could try. I was let's, about let's to do it, but I was like, no, I'm not even messing up. <laughs> it's fine. So just Shoot. hit me with something. All right. All right. Uh, let me see what I got. All right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh. Day of Bowie. Uh. I've been that skill to kill game type, real chill, getting more down the nose in Brazil. Make it hard to figure me, switching me, cause I be the reason for the season. Fresh off the crate and stroll with the hurricane swag and see. Go in the crowds, there's a girl looking at me. Going in the candy store, looking in them kitty cats. Miss Jaws break her head, where brothers were fat. Black car angel, black car presence. Mean green aura flashing in that presence. H.A. yes, the praying mantis. Attack with the Mac, a flip flows to make shows. You know how it go, how it be on Michelangelo. Shows to love a GTF. Mr. Michelangelo, bring the fire to you. Going in, dudes. Cowabunga. Oh, hey. yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely good. <laughs> That was great, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some amazing talent we have on the show. I can't, I can't lie. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Bowie today. I'm Elijah O.T. with my special guest stars, Alex, Mikey Angelo, and, uh, and my beautiful audience. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we got to keep talking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.